Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. 
these Wednesday evenings to the 2021 Ezekiel Lutheran Lenten Sermon Series, No Perfect People Allowed. If we're honest with ourselves, we are not perfect people. If we're honest with ourselves, we know that Ezekiel Lutheran is not filled with perfect people either. No matter what impressions we might have of ourselves, and pride can be a good thing, we are not perfect people, and we have fallen as a fallen humanity. The true message of Jesus Christ and the purpose of Ezekiel Lutheran or any church is not simply to be a religion or a religious system. Rather, Jesus' purpose for us and our mission is that each person is in relationship with him and that we are a community of relationships. God's purpose is that people come just as we are with all of our failings, with all of our sinfulness, and we seek forgiveness from a Lord that can grant that to us. And then we seek forgiveness from each other, from others who will grant that to us as well. Jesus calls us to know him and to love him, to speak to him, to worship him. He calls us to receive his love and forgiveness through faith. It is not based on what we do or how religious we are. It's based on his grace and his amazing love. I hope you enjoy these weekly sub-themes as they roll out these next five weeks. Praise be to God. Colossians 1, verses 15 through 20 the supremacy of the Son of God. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. The word of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I am Matthew Mitchell, our Contemporary Worship Director here at Ezekiel. I'm pleased to be able to preach once again for this Lenten evening service. I used to work at the church that I grew up in, and I always thought that this church must be some kind of hotbed of spiritual warfare because this place was this wellspring of crises. And when I say the word crises, I mean it. I'm talking about uh, when I was in high school, I had a youth director who was 40 years old uh, arrested for sexual assault of a 17-year-old girl. We were in a constant state of financial crisis. We never had a head pastor, and when we finally got one uh, for a couple of years, all of a sudden he gets a concussion and he can't think straight anymore. And he's trying to come back and preach anyway, and it's a disaster. And in the end, he ends up divorcing his wife and abandoning his children to leave them for a married woman in the congregation, leaves her family, and they get married. And he wants to keep on going like everything's fine, he leaves, it's a more revolving door of, of leadership at head pastor position, and it's just chaos all the time. And I always felt like, when I was working there anyway, that I was fighting the good fight. But even I had my limit. I went to a voters meeting once, and voters meetings are supposed to be you know, kind of mundane meetings about budgets and, and fiscal responsibility and, and these types of things. And at this particular voters meeting, I literally had to help break up a fist fight in the parking lot. And the altercation was over which church committee should have the power 
in the absence of a head pastor. And I just remember thinking, what is this? What am I doing here? How can we go worship on Sunday after that? Pastor Mark, our former pastor here at Ezekiel, was a mentor for me, and I told him this story about breaking up the fist fight at the church meeting, and I thought he put it perfectly. He said, churches are vulnerable to people who feel they don't have enough power and control in their own lives because they can see a place where they're going to kick down the doors and start throwing their weight around because who's going to stand up to them? As Christians, as Christ followers, we often watch our faith and our God slapped on to causes and, and things of the world that are actually antithetical to the gospel as we know it. And it's easy to sit on the sidelines and say, how can our God allow this? Paul writes in Colossians here that Jesus is the firstborn over all creation. In him, all things were created. He is before all things. In him, all things hold together. So how can he allow this? And I can't help but think of Jesus' parable, the wheat and the weeds, the servants asking the good farmer, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. And the servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull these weeds up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in this parable, Jesus is telling us this is how it is, not how it ought to be. And while Jesus has all the fullness of God dwelling in him, and he is reconciling all of creation to himself through his blood, we, each person, each church, are a mixed bag. We're wheat and weeds. We're a mixed bag of good and evil. C.S. Lewis wrote, There is no neutral ground in the universe. Every square inch... Every split second is claimed by God and counterclaimed by Satan. And this is what Paul is talking about, reconciliation. Our God reconciling all the universe to himself, to goodness, to love, and to light. It's easier for us to say, how can God allow these things that are so counter to him to keep going on in his name. Because when we think about the power of God, we like to assign our ideas of power to him. We like to assign the big muscles and the throwing our weight around, getting our way, our dominance. Why can't he just do that for us? But as Pastor Dave preached about just 10 days ago in worship, Paul points out in Corinthians, that the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. We forget that when God pulls out the big guns, it looks like Jesus Christ dying on the cross for the very people that are mocking him, reconciling all creation to himself through his blood. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Even though we are all flawed, even though we are all at once wheat and weeds, God must think that that wheat is worth it. Despite our flaws, God has given us his son as the head of the body, the church, to show us what reconciliation looks like. It looks like love. It looks like hope. It looks like sacrifice. And we must ask ourselves, today, every day, right now, even if I am both wheat and weeds, even if I'm watching a church parking lot brawl, even if I feel overwhelmed by darkness, how can I look like Jesus and be on that side of goodness, of love and light, of reconciliation to him?
In Jesus' name, amen.
And now, Lord, receive our prayer as we pray the words that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.